On today's episode of Locked On Mariners, is Seattle playing in baseball's toughest division? And could Matt Brash find his way back into the rotation? All that and more coming up here on the first Mailbag Monday of 2023. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Monday, January 2nd, 2023. Happy New Year. This is Tiding as Alice and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast. And thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube. Or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. The link as well as our social accounts is in the description below. Let's kick off 2023 with a mailbag. We're going to answer some questions from our YouTube subscribers. We also got a couple via email. And uh, Max is going to kick us off here. Max asks, uh, is there a chance Matt Brash could get an opportunity to start this year? If his command approves, could he work his way back into the rotation? Max also adds, also, Colby, if you could go on a uh, quote-unquote shut up Mariners fans blaming Jerry for Stanton's money issues, that would be very therapeutic. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you so much for the question, Max. Uh, so, Colby, let's answer this first part of the question about Matt Brash. Uh, we've heard that, uh, you know, or from Jerry DePoto himself, at least earlier on in the season, uh, this offseason, and obviously things can quickly change, but he did say at one point that Matt Brash would kind of ramp his way up as a uh, starter this offseason heading into spring training. Uh, but what do you think? Do you see it for Matt Brash getting back into the rotation? Uh, how, do, how do you think uh, that could work? I don't think it should work. Um you know, I, I think there's this idea that Matt Brash went into the bullpen and because he had success out of the bullpen, he must have meant he was throwing more strikes. And, and that's not really the case. It's just that when you're pitching out of out of the bullpen, walks hurt you a lot less because typically you only need one out or, or two outs, sometimes three or four. But you can you can walk a couple guys. And because Brash has extreme swing and miss stuff, he can get away with that out of the you know, out of the rotation, you have to face guys two, three times. And you, if you stack up enough of these opportunities where guys are getting, you know, you're walking a couple guys and, and having to work around it, then eventually the other team is going to, is going to punch through. Um, so it wasn't really that brash had, you know, anything figured out. It's just that the Mariners found a way to mitigate his struggles. He still threw, he still walked guys. He still, you know, wasn't around the strike zone enough, uh, to be considered a starter. So it, 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 the idea that Brash fixed himself in the bullpen, it's it's just not true. It, it was just mitigated because it's easier to pitch out of the bullpen than it is to get through a lineup two or three times. So um, to me, Brash, we know he's going to get his starts. In spring training, they've already said as much. That makes sense. It's a lot easier to have a guy stretch out and then say, hey, we're going to put you in the bullpen than it is to you know, have him enter this this spring training and say you're a reliever and then decide, oh, you know what, actually maybe we'll start you. Uh, that it's a much easier transition to go the other way. So right. uh, he'll get his starts, but unless there is some like dramatic improvement, and I mean dramatic um, improvement in his control and his command of his, of his pitches, uh, he's going to go to the bullpen. And, and honestly, it's probably where you want him anyways, because you know, the, the risk that brash is, you know, significantly better than flexing over 180 innings is, is pretty high. But uh, you know, there's also a huge risk. If you take one of your only two, maybe three, three high leverage arms you have in your bullpen right now and remove him from the equation that also hurts your bullpen. So I, I don't see any way that the brash uh, makes starts for the Mariners this year, barring some kind of emergency or, or some kind of uh, spot start type of thing, but no, he shouldn't really be the Mariners should give him an opportunity, but unless his command improves like drastically and it's not going to be about numbers, right? It's not going to be about, Hey, he only walked three guys in, in 12 innings. That, that's not what it's about. How many three, two counts did he run? How was he around the zone? Did he put the fastball where he wanted it? These are things you're just gonna have to watch. And, and honestly, even if he does all of that over like 12, 13 innings in spring training, I don't know if that's enough for me to, to just give him the number five starter spot anyway. So mm -hmm. to me, no, I don't think there's a realistic path that he's in the rotation this year. Yeah. Because of the subtraction of Eric Swanson, uh, from this bullpen already and the fact that the Mariners haven't really done anything to add to that bullpen outside of you know Trevor Gott who realistically is a, a mid leverage arm at best 
uh, someone that's going to slot in, you know, with the Penn Murphys and Matt Festas of the world. Uh, I don't want to take away another high leverage arm from this bullpen because you're looking at, you know, what was arguably your greatest strength, if you know, or at least one of your greatest strengths in 2022, and taking two key pieces away from it by trading Swanson for Teoscar Hernandez and then, you know, moving Brash back into the rotation. And again, uh, you're running a pretty giant risk when you do that that you know like how much better is he actually going to be over chris flex and how many innings is is he going to be able to go because he hasn't pitched a, a full season as a starter before you know all these things have to uh come into account here and while the upside is great you know he's a number three starter if he figures it all out there's also you know there's a likelier path to having a devastating one-two punch at the back end of your bullpen with Brash and Munoz talking guys that can legitimately be top five, top 10 relievers in all of baseball and having both of those guys go back to back in your bullpen on most nights is a really valuable asset to have. And, you know, obviously Brash at his hundred percentile as a starter is also a very valuable asset to have. But mm -hmm. again, you got to, uh, you got to weigh what is more likely here and what is really like, what is your biggest need right now? Number five starter or a high leverage bullpen arm. I would argue that it's the bullpen arm at this point because I think you can survive with a Chris Flexen or Marco mm -hmm. Gonzalez. Right. And because we haven't seen uh, Brash even look like a number five, you're risking a lot by assuming that he is just going to be better than Flexen or Marco. We don't know that. And and he was, after the first you know initial good start against the White Sox, he was terrible as a starter. So we don't know that. So you're taking a big risk in two spots. If you put Brash, you maybe you get worse in the, you definitely get worse in the bullpen. If Brash is in the rotation and you might get worse in the rotation. If you pick Brash over flexing. So uh, there's a lot of factors here. And also you, you don't want to try and make up for the Brash thing by forcing Emerson Hancock or Bryce Miller up to the big leagues, right. To, to pitch out of the bullpen. You want to give those guys opportunity to develop as a starter, see what they have because I'll tell you what, if Hancock can take a big step forward this year, that's a mighty valuable trade chip you have. And, or it's, you know, that number four or number three starter that you were looking to add uh, coming up in the middle of the year. And so you don't want to just move guys around and you also don't want to trust, you know, Isaiah Campbell to pitch in high leverage situations right away because he has to, because you didn't, you know, add anybody and, and you subtracted brash. You don't want to put anybody in that position. So the Mariners should let Brash go out there and start a few spring training games, see how he looks, see if the command has improved. But unless it drastically improves, I, I'm not really even considering it. it. It's it's just about, you know, resting other guys and, and getting Brash work. And then, you know, you can kind of slowly shut him down and, and transition him into a bullpen role as you get closer to opening day. So I to me, no, there there's no there's no realistic path where I could see myself being super excited about Matt Brash being in the Mariners rotation. Yeah, if you can add another 6th, 7th, 8th inning type arm, then I'm a little more open to the idea of at least testing things out with Brash, but for the most part, yeah. and I mean, like again, like you said, right, you know, let him come into spring training and uh, ramped up as a starter and let him throw those mm -hmm. innings and whatnot, and then, you know, you can easily transition him back to the bullpen if that's not the path that you want to go. Uh, but again, you know, I would feel a, a little bit better about having him actually make the rotation over Flex and over Marco if you have another high leverage arm in place, because I just, uh, again, uh, bullpens are ultimately volatile. We don't know mm -hmm. how they're going to perform on a year to year basis. Uh, even, you know, the elite arms of the elite, sometimes you can't count on. Uh, but uh, having that upside, having, you know, what I know and what I've already seen uh, with Brash and Munoz as kind of that one, two punch along with the Seawalds and the Castillos of the world would be nice to have. Um, also, so I know you don't dance on command, Colby, but uh, Max did uh, ask you uh, if you have uh, a little something, something in the tank here for the folks that are uh, talking about the uh, the spending no. of the Mariners organization. I'm not a trained monkey. I don't dance when you grind the grind the box. Okay, it's not happening. I decide what I want to rant on and when I want to rant on it. Not you. So shut up. Leave me alone. And when I decide I want to rant, then I'll rant. There you go. All right. Can't throw your nickels at me and expect me to dance. I don't dance for tips. Okay. I'm a professional. Oh. Dang it. <laughs> Certainly. Got Maybe on right. Wednesday, but we got, we got a lot of questions to get to today. 
We do. We do indeed. All right. We'll get to more of them in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to college bowl season and basketball we've got it all at betonline.net and if you love sports podcasts you can find those at betonline as well we're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more bet online is where the game starts you're listening to the lockdown mariners podcast thank you so much for making us your first listen let's get back into these questions here for the first mailbag monday of 2023 nathan wants to know very simply, is the AL West the toughest division in baseball now? Colby? Mm, it's one of them. I mean, it's certainly not the central, either central, so we can eliminate mm. them. And, and no. uh, I think probably the NL East is, is pretty dang tough. You have, you know, three World Series contenders in that division. I don't think that you can count the Angels and Rangers as World Series contenders right now. And uh, so that's more than the AL West has. Uh, so I, I think probably the NL East, the AL East is also, you know, Baltimore's, you know, on the up and, and Tampa Bay and Toronto and New York are very talented. Boston is out there. Um, so, you know, uh, I think the East division still have something uh, to say about that. And also the NL West is, is pretty competitive too. Um, obviously with uh-huh. the two like big juggernaut teams being, the Dodgers and, and the Padres, but you know, the, the giants have made some moves. Arizona exist. Um, the Rockies are a dumpster fire. They're, they're trash. Don't, don't even worry about them. Um, so I would still probably say that the AOS is at best second, second toughest. I, I think the NL East is probably a little bit more tough, a little bit more tough, but, uh, I think you could argue that the AL East is stronger and the NL West is stronger, but, uh, I, I certainly don't see, I don't think I could say that the AOS is the toughest division. Not yeah, yet. I, I'd go both Eastern divisions over them for sure. Um, the, the West is good, don't get me wrong. The Astros mm-hmm. are still arguably the best team in baseball. I'd say the Mets are definitely in that conversation for sure. Um, and then, you know, the Mariners are, are a really good team that is on the cusp of being great. Uh, and then you have the Rangers and Angels, who've certainly gotten better this off season, but I don't think they've done mm-hmm. enough. I think the Rangers are being massively overhyped. We talked about that on the Patreon show last week. I just I don't get it. I think they're going to be better than sixty eight wins, of course. But again, the foundation that you were building from this off season was sixty eight wins. So um, I could go on and on about that. Uh, and then the Angels, you know, their their issue still is pitching. Right. They've added some offensive pieces. They've added a couple of pitching pieces, but they haven't, you know, they haven't done enough of the work there. Like Tyler Anderson, I don't think it's going to replicate a four win season, uh, right. you know, and all that. So uh, there's still a lot of work to be done there for both of those teams. Um, it's going to be competitive. Like, don't get me wrong. It's going to be competitive. Um, those are going to be tough games uh, in division. Uh, and even, you know, the A's got some young talent that's certainly going to grow over the course of the year. Um uh, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I I I look at the Eastern divisions right now, and I think those are both juggernauts right now. Even with yeah. you know teams like the Nationals and and Marlins and Red Sox being in the mix in those divisions, I, I think those yeah. those Marlins divisions got are some still pitching so, and a good yeah. Marlins got some pitching and good. The Marlins are significantly better than the the A's or the right. uh, yeah. um well obviously the national the Nationals might be worse than the A's, but yeah, I, I think yeah. the two Eastern divisions are. Or bad. Really, it's just the central. The central is a mess. Both centrals are bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the coasts are doing just fine. All right. Next question comes from Daniel, who asks about uh, Evan White. We've gotten a lot of comments and questions about Evan White, so I'm kind of glad that uh, Daniel asked this because, uh, yeah, I've been wanting to talk about Evan White here for, for a little while. Uh, Daniel asks, uh, does Evan White factor into the Mariners' plans anymore? I haven't heard anything on his progress. Could he be a first base slash left field option for the Mariners in 2023? Or does he have any trade value? All right. So to answer the second part of that question, no, zero, zero trade value whatsoever. Uh, To answer essentially the first part of that question, can he impact the Mariners in 2023? I'd put those chances at 0.0000001%. Wow. So I'm saying there's a non-zero chance. 
Mm. But it's, it's, it's very low, very low. Evan White will have a positive war for the Seattle Mariners <laughs> in 2023. So, if, by the way, zero counts by, as negative. By as the way, positive, if, so. if, if, if I said that, you would have been like, no, 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 <laughs> shut up. Shut well, up. look, look, part of me still believes in Evan White, despite really having no evidence to believe in him. Um, you believe in him for 2023, though? Like, because I do believe kinda, in Evan White a little like, bit, here, but I don't believe in him Evan for White. this year. All right, let's just talk about Evan White, the player, and what he is, right? Evan White is a no longer young, but he's not old. Uh, he's essentially still a prospect when you really break it down. He's he's essentially a prospect who has dealt with some pretty serious injuries. I think two separate hip surgeries um, in a core issue. Like He's been banged up, and, and that definitely hurts his value. And when he was at the big league level, we saw the power, which was our biggest concern when they drafted him. Uh, but we didn't see any of the average. We didn't. We saw a ton of strikeouts. We saw the elite uh, defense at first base. I don't want to give up on Evan White because there's there's a you know a, a Gold Glove first baseman who can hit 25 home runs and I, I think can still hit 250. I really think that guy's in there somewhere. It's but to me, White is a guy that you have zero expectation for. He cannot factor into your plans at all. He has to a get healthy. B he has to hit in AAA. He didn't really do that. He had a couple of big home runs when he in the few games he played, but he was still striking out a ton. He has to put the ball in play. He's not Joey Gallo, right? He can't be. So Evan White to me is a really interesting guy. Uh, he certainly is not tradable right now. In fact, we're at the point where if you put him on waivers, he might not get claimed um, because the contract. Well, it's not a big contract at all. It's not an issue. Uh, it's still a lot to pay for a guy who's right now not a major leaguer and hurt so evan white is a guy i'm definitely going to look forward to watching in spring training i hope he's ready to go for spring training i also haven't heard any updates on that um but he is a he's an athlete he's got tremendous raw power uh he before he got called up the first time he had a nice track record of hitting for average obviously we know about the defense um and he is still at least as far as i know a good enough athlete to to you know help out in left field maybe here and there, but he has zero role in the 2023 Mariners unless he forces it. Like, yeah, Ty France, Jared Kelnick, and and whoever can get hurt in spring training, knock on wood. And I would still be like, I guess we'll see if Cade Marlowe can play first base. You know what I mean? Like, because Evan White has to earn his way back into the good graces. Uh, and I, I still think you are. I I'm still a believer in the athlete of Evan White. And so, um, but yeah, he's, he's, probably out of time it's it's now or never and so if, if he doesn't perform or he gets hurt again he's probably getting dfa and he still might at some point this if if the mariners added somebody to the 40 man tomorrow and they dfa evan white like i'd be it'd be weird because there are better options but like ty and i wouldn't be setting twitter on fire because we get it but i, I still kind of believe in evan white i don't know why i do i just think that when he figures it out it's it's going to be elsewhere and it's, it's going to be like 29 be. years old playing for like Detroit and randomly yeah. hit 260 with 25 home runs. Yeah, like that that's kind of how I feel his trajectory. Taylor Tremellish. It's just this year he's got to prove that he can be and stay healthy because he's had mm -hmm. multiple setbacks over the last year and a half and that he can hit consistently that he can put the, mm -hmm. the just not even put the ball in play just put the bat on the ball in general <laughs> like he's got to yep. be able to prove that so that's but, going to take that's going to take a lot of time and like you said mm -hmm. he's got to force his if he's going to impact this 2023 Mariners ball club in any way he's got to force the situation he's got to push the issue he's got to show up and show out down in triple a and mm -hmm. show some legitimate uh steps forward yeah I, I think what you're looking for here is if if he performs in triple a right and the strikeouts get cut and you're kind of wondering like, Hey, are the mayors considering bringing him up? If he doesn't start playing outfield at some point in AAA, he's not coming up anytime soon because you're not going to bench Ty France for Evan white. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. I mean, unless, you know, you really just need a DH then fine. Ty France can DH and, and white can play first base. But I think that's what you're looking for. Look, start looking to see if, if you see him in, in spring training, is he running down fly balls at all? Or is he just, and if I was the Mariners, I wouldn't put him in the outfield in spring training. I just want him to focus on hitting and yeah. getting healthy. So we'll see what happens. But I'm not giving up yet. But I'm also not fighting super hard for him to be on this roster or anything. Sure. 
All right, we got a few more questions coming up here in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. And if you're like me where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then, man, I've got just the thing for you. you got to try Built with Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy, only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering your Built Bars at Built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen. Let's get back into these questions for Mailbag Monday, starting with Troy who uh, emailed us. We got a couple of uh, questions via email. Uh, Troy says, uh, best of mornings, TDG and CP. What's up? What's up? Uh, Troy asks, uh, what am I to do with my beloved Meech spring training jersey? It was my go-to last season. Would love your take on wearing former player gear to the ballpark. Does it have to be a legend like the kid or Ichi to be legal? Uh, my only other option is a Jay Buhner away jersey I have hanging up. I've gotten some love when wearing it before, so maybe uh, Meech will be less uh, retro cool in a couple of years or will be retro cool in a couple of years rather uh, keep your hat game strong fellas love the show see y'all in 2023 uh, so Troy where will you want man no one's judging you look I, I love a I love a good old like random jer- and I'm not calling Mitch Hanniger random but like I love a good jersey like that who's you know is just mm-hmm. a good not great player in the lore of of Seattle Mariners history and the overall lore of Seattle Mariners of the Seattle Mariners. Uh I love that. So yeah, where your Mitch Haniger jersey, man? He was a great player when he was here. Uh he was a lot of fun to to root for. Wear wear it and wear it proudly. I'm judging you. Mm-hmm. Um Get a current player or grow up. No, I'm joking. Uh, Mitch Haniger is fine. Like, what's wrong with a Mitch Haniger jersey? You're probably going to see a lot of them. That's fine. Um, yeah. You know, it'd be a little different if it was like a, a Milton Bradley or a Josh Lukey or somebody like that. But no, it's it's Mitch. You know, he's yeah. you know a well loved player, and and so you're fine. Like, I mean, I I see plenty of Dustin Ackley jerseys. I, I don't like think that person lesser of that person. Well, maybe a little, but. That's a different story. So no, I mean Hanniger's fine. Yeah. Um you know, if you want to wear a Seeger, fine. If you want to wear a Felix, fine. I like I there's yeah, wear whatever player you like, man. Did you like Mitch Hanniger when he was here? Then wear his jersey. What do I care? Like, yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. Stop asking these asinine questions. Nobody cares, <laughs> Troy. Wear your dang jersey. No. <laughs> Sorry. Uh no, Hanniger's totally fine. Like that that's yeah. well within the, the realm of like yeah like acceptable yeah dude where would you want who doesn't like mitch hanniger just don't wear a steve clevenger jersey anything but that mm-hmm. and you're this good. guy hates he hates mitch hanniger so you're 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 pointing in the wrong direction pal you you pulled a tie you this a guy tie. There, there you this go. guy there you, there you go <laughs> he hates mitch hanniger of course we can pull course. the tape kyle lewis you know mm-hmm. baseball in general uh the seattle mariners mm-hmm. i don't even like the mariners uh, mm-hmm. you know, I just I just show up here for for a paycheck. Yeah. All right. Craig uh, asks, uh, would defensive shifts uh, substantially or, re- or well, they signed it off as Craig. So no. this okay, this was enough. Craig. This was Craig. Fair enough. This this was Craig. Uh, with defensive shifts substantially reduced by new rules in 2023, <laughs> why not bring back Kyle Seager to DH? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Craig, you are now banned for me asking questions um, because Kyle Seeger hates you and he hates the organization. Oh, is really what it is. Maybe not mm. you specifically, but he hates the Seattle Mariners. And I got unfortunate news for you, Craig. The Mariners don't like Kyle Seeger either um, because Kyle Seeger is a liar. He is disruptive into your clubhouse. He did some, let's say, ethnic, ethnic, ethnically questionable things. Eth- ethnically. Ethnic. Sorry. Ethnic. Eth- uh, Ty, say the word for me. I can't, I can't, I can't speak eth- anymore. Eth- ethically. Ethically. Thank you. <laughs> ethically questionable. I, 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 like, let's be very clear. I wasn't saying anything about Kyle Seeger's, like, treatment towards other people based on certain, yeah, but whatever. He did some dubious this, things. This, this, in this the is clubhouse. your Cole Young moment. It, it is. It is. <laughs> We talked about that on the live stream. You guys should check that out. Check Ty's Twitter if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyways, yeah, he did some some morally questionable things in the clubhouses last year. Uh, we know he lied uh, about you know his relationship with the Mariners and, and Jerry Depoto. Uh, try to make you know those try to make the organization and the GM look like the bad guys when in reality they just operated like any other baseball team would I like, mm. so no, it's not going to happen. And, and by the way, Kyle Seeger is one of those guys that people would be like, Oh my God, without the shift, he's going to hit 280. Like, no, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. Kyle Seeger's not. Good. He's also been retired for a year. We don't know yep. what shape he's in. We don't know if he's been mm-hmm. swinging at all. Like we don't like there, there are so many right. variables here. Like aside from just the relationship that Seeger just, doesn't want to be too, here is the big I, one. Like what? And also does Seeger even want to play baseball in general? Right? right like he he retired he he had a chance to go out and you know find Play another opportunity brother. yeah he had another you know he could find another opportunity for himself and i'm sure that he received some level of interest on, on the market mm-hmm. probably not to what his ex- expectations were at least right you know monetarily like um, he's not getting 15 million dollars but yeah yeah but uh but yeah you know he, I'm, I'm sure that he had a <laughs> i'm sure you could get like a few more than that but yeah uh he uh he um you know, I'm sure he had opportunities, right? So, um, yeah, I, I just I don't think that he really wants to play baseball in general. I don't think that he would have any interest in coming back to Seattle because he just he right. doesn't like the 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 people that make up he the organization. He burned bridges here. Yeah, just call it it. He burned a lot of bridges yeah. on his and way don't, down. And yeah, and the Mariners don't don't want him back either. So it's no. just it's a it's a non starter. <laughs> it's a it's a divorce that's good for everybody involved. Um. <laughs> Because again, Seeger did some ethically dubious things. Not uh, ethnic, <laughs> ethic. Okay, my bad. I couldn't talk for like two minutes. It's my, yeah. That's uh, that's getting cut and put on the blooper reel. Look at that, our first yeah. blooper in twenty twenty three. How about there that? We go. There we go. There Didn't we take go. long. Which Mariners player would you not want dating your daughter? <laughs> so as if this uh, this show was not unhinged enough, uh, we have this question, Colby what's what's your answer here man what do you what are you feeling who who do you not want anywhere near you and your hypothetical fictional family here well the answer is none of them because i don't have a daughter the second answer is even if i did she'd be like two so again none of them um i mean good god man um to answer the question in the spirit it was intended yeah, the, in the spirit yes, yes. um it's a good question. Uh, I don't, did you have anybody in mind? Look, I love Cal Raleigh. I love <laughs> Cal Raleigh. I appreciate the the drought ender. I appreciate all that. Absolute sure. legend. But on principle, I cannot allow my daughter to date someone nicknamed Big Dumper. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I, can, I can't do it. I'm sorry. But you would. Mm, nah. You would totally like, oh, please. You would totally be like, oh, you're dating Cal Raleigh? Well, have them over for dinner then. Like, <laughs> absolutely, you would. Um, on, on principle, I just, I can't. No, no, I can't. I'm can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cal. Love you, pal. Dylan Moore. <laughs> for course, obvious I, reasons. Yeah, of course, obviously, <laughs> obviously. And the and the and the sus manscape dad too. Like, so, for, for that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I can't have that. I, I don't want that gene pool mixing with mine. So. No, no on, on Dylan Moore. Um, no, but seriously, I don't, I don't care. Like whatever. Can they get season tickets? Great. I don't care. I don't know enough about these guys to decide who's a bad guy. Who's a good guy. I, I don't, I don't know, but Dylan Moore is probably top of the list. Can't go. trust there that guy. 
Of course. I could trust that guy about as well as he can hit a curveball. Uh, uh, yeah. Not a lot, not a lot then. Mm. Uh-uh. Not good. All right. Uh, anything else before we uh, we hop off of here? I think the real question here is if you could pick anybody to date your daughter on the oh, Mariners, Julio. who would you pick? And Julio. Let's take Julio off the board because <laughs> I know that's where you're going with it. Uh, okay. Uh, Gino. Gino. Okay. Okay. Gino's cool. a sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I think yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd probably say uh, I think JP would be fun there to you have go. like a, yeah, like JP. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so very unhinged show. Very unhinged today, so. mostly, especially at mostly the end last. There. Yeah, mostly yeah. the last <laughs> yeah. six minutes. It's twenty twenty three. We're back. That's gonna do it for our show. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us here on Locked On Mariners. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tiding Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at lo underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, C A N E G N Z L Z, and uh, Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen for your next listen check out the locked on sports today podcast featuring the biggest stories of the day plus instant reactions big game recaps and the take of the day it's available on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get your podcasts just like us and with that have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you on wednesday peace